Welcome to the Life of Hair. My name's James Atkinson. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode. Now, this week's episode is something that I've actually never covered before or even talked about specifically. I've talked about something similar, which is air touch balayage. Um, but this time I'm going to talk about air touch highlights, um, something that is obviously an evolution of air touch balayage. Now, when I did the air touch balayage, uh, video there was mixed comments you know some people saying oh they love using it other people saying they absolutely hated the technique and they could you know back comb and tease um, and that would give them a similar effect and um, to a degree I agree to, with those comments but to a degree I disagree with those comments um, and I'm actually going to make a video talking about the differences between teasing and air touch um, and why they're not similar and similar in different ways. But we'll save that for another time. I won't talk about in this specific intro because my intros are long enough most of the time anyway. So um, without spoiling the rest of this video, I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please share it with your friends, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button and chat to me down in those comments. And guys, I know that some of you write in the comments that you hate the adverts and all those things, but remember, you are helping every YouTuber by watching those adverts only for a few seconds, 10 seconds, that's all it takes. You're helping us out immensely by doing that. Um, it really does boost the amount that uh, YouTube share our videos to other people and our ad revenue, um, which in turn helps us make more high quality content for you to enjoy. So remember that, it doesn't just apply to me. None of those things just apply to my channel. That is across the board. So hitting that thumbs up button, subscribing, and chatting to me in the comments and watching those adverts all help massively. Anyway, besides that, you guys are amazing. You have supported my channel amazingly well. And in about a month's time, we'll have hit 40,000 subscribers. So that is very cool. And I'm super excited to reach that target. So thank you all very much from the bottom of my heart. And a big thank you as always to my Patreons who have joined the Life of Hair Patreon. And we do some live sessions where we talk about things in more detail really and you can ask me questions right there right then as I do it so if you want to get involved with that then go down to the description and click the link and you can work out whether you want to be part of that or not um, and as things evolve going into the new year I'm going to be launching the Life of Hair Digital Academy um, and I cannot wait for that I promise you that is my most of my waking hours in a day thinking about getting that sorted. Um, so I am very, very much looking forward to bringing you some new, fresh things over there when that kicks off in the new year. And until then, thank you for your time as always. I hope you enjoy this one and I shall see you again next week for another episode of The Life of Hair. So here we have our starting point of this particular color. My client is a natural level seven and she's got some uh, pre-existing balayage. It was a root stretch. There was so much going on previously and she hasn't really had her hair done during lockdown at all. So she's got a really long six inches of regrowth. Um, so we're gonna start with a rectangular section through that top and we're gonna work up the sides in a horizontal fashion. Um, we're gonna take our sections that are around five millimeters or so in depth and are spaced at about one centimeter apart. So effectively one centimeter section cut in half. Um, blast the shorter hairs through the section. So you wanna keep the section nice and flat. Um, don't pinch the ends together too tight and then blast the air through the section. Very, very important, guys, that you get as much of those short hairs through the section, especially when we're doing air touch highlights. The sections are much slimmer, and therefore we want a very, very finite amount of hair in the foil. Think of highlights, you know, very soft highlights stem from very fine weaves. This is exactly the same in terms of the way that we would expect it to look, but we don't have to weave each section. We just blow the air 
through the hair and the smaller hairs come away from the hair in between each of the sections. Super simple. You'll see it on the screen now as we're doing it. Um, I haven't talked about the way that I foil for quite a long time in my videos. So some of you may not have ever seen my foiling videos, uh, but it's a super simple, very effective way of applying a foil. Um, it's, it, it, it creates a lip at the back of the foil that you can push up tighter against the scalp, which prevents any leakages, you know, any product overflowing through the back of the foil and therefore prevents bleeds. The ultimate in uh, nightmare moments when you take your highlights off and you realize you've got bleeds in between your foils. So as you see me here, pick up my foil, the foil, um, I put the foil at the top, the pintail at the bottom. I then fold it over. I place it in at the root area. I apply my product to stick it to the foil. I then saturate the hair. I work with softer brush strokes up to the roots. So there's less product at the top of the foil anyway, that will prevent any expanding bleach spilling over the edge of the foil. And then I simply fold by a third a third again, secure the back, and I fold the edges if necessary. I don't always fold the edges on every single section. It doesn't really need to be folded. The main time that I would fold the edges of my foils is if I was going to paint in between them somehow. In this particular instance, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just folding them because I'm in that kind of mood on that kind of day. But this technique, guys, I know some of you are like air touch. No, don't like it. Not a fan, blah, blah. That's absolutely fine. Um, you know, and not every technique is for everybody. Let's remember that, guys. It's really, really important to remember that these techniques are not there to satisfy you all. OK, um, some people are going to take some things away from these techniques and other people are going to watch them and say, no, nope, not for me. Thanks very much. But no, thanks. And that's really important that we remember that this is an individual business when anything is artistic, creative. We each have our own toolkits, our own thing in the bag that we like to use. Now, I'm very experimental as a hairdresser. I use a multitude of techniques and I practice different techniques because I think it helps me create new and more interesting things. Uh, along the journey. You know, there's techniques that I do that I've not seen anybody else do, and that is from practicing. Now, I don't always advocate you practice on your clients straight away, although I will hold my hands up and say I do sometimes. But if you've got a mannequin head, uh, a table clamp or a tripod, practice, 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 guys, because I think that is the, the only way that you're going to improve in a lot of people's cases. I don't see enough practicing. I've been a hairdresser for a pretty long time now. And it's not something that I see people doing a lot of. Practicing when they've got spare time, practicing at home. Now, on Facebook, uh, I'm, a, I'm part of a lot of the you know, Facebook groups around the world. And I do see people practicing. And I applaud you for that effort. Honestly, it really is fantastic that you guys go to the trouble of practicing. So if you are one of those people, then pat yourself on the back right now and you are taking yourself and your career and your potential to earn money up and up and up. No doubt about it. Well done. Big high five from me. But if you're not practicing and you think to yourself, I'd really like to improve my skills. I'd really like to kind of get a grip of balayage and all these different techniques. Then remember, guys, it's super important that the, the, the onus of conti continuous professional development is on you. Don't wait for your boss to send you on a course. Don't wait for someone to come along and put it in front of you for free. Just go and do it on your own time. You don't even need to invest in an expensive course. You just need to simply practice the things that you've seen maybe on YouTube for free, like this video, for instance. It might open your mind and it might give you a new idea and you can invent something yourself because we're all capable of inventing stuff. It's just about practicing to get there. So I hope that helps you if you're stuck in a rut and you really want to up your game. Now, as we're working through this technique, you can see that I've kind of gone from the left side over to the right side. And I'm going to hold my hands up. I don't know why I put that random foil in the crown area before I started. I just got carried away. 
but there's no, it's done now. So I've just left it there to process. And that random foil will be there until I finish this process. And I actually removed it the minute I finished because it was so, you know, it was, it was done. It was platinum. Um, so don't ask me why that falls there. You know, we get distracted. I was personally distracted talking to my client. This is a really great client of mine and we get on super well and we were, you know, chatting away and I just put that foil in the crown here. I don't know why, but I was meant to start in the sides. So that's just explains that for you. And as you can see, this technique is very repetitive. It repeats itself over and over again. And I know a lot of people say, well, picking up the hairdryer, putting down the hairdryer. Well, weaving the sections takes actually longer, I think, than picking up and putting down the hairdryer and blowing the hair through the sections in some cases. Obviously, there are times when that isn't the case. And, you know, because the hair didn't go through the section, you have to pull it out of the way and all those kind of things. But it does give you a different effect too a weaved highlight. And there's absolutely no doubt about it. You cannot emulate or replicate this look with a weave. It just gives you a different kind of diffusion. And diffusion is so hugely important when we're talking about coloring hair in the salon, um, especially with modern balayage and foiling techniques. Diffusion is obviously that uh, inability to see where the color starts or stops. And that is mega, mega important. It is one of the kind of essences, if you will, of modern colouring and modern highlighting. Because highlighting's evolved so much even since I've been hairdressing. In fact, when I started hairdressing, highlighting with foil had just come around. You know, people were just starting to use foil and they'd come away from cap highlights and they were picking up foils for the first time. And I admit I've only ever done one set of cap highlights in my entire career. Um, I know I've seen so many things on Instagram lately. I want to give it another go, to be honest, and I probably will. Um, but I just, you know, the repetitive nature of how do you repeat it? There's so many questions I have about cap highlights. So if anyone's an expert out there, do chat to me down in the comments and I'd love to hear about your cap highlighting expertise. Um, I did one set years ago and I decided that that was it and I was never going to do it again. Um, so, you know, the, the diffused look that you get from this very much is a signature of modern highlighting techniques, I feel. Um, I know a lot of people use the combs that you can like push through the section and it gives you a nice diffused weave. I personally actually just got one of those. I've been trying it. I'm probably going to do a little video about it at some point. Um, I don't know how I feel about that comb. Velspar, Vel, Vel, Velspar, something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel at the moment. I've had inconsistent results with it um, and I can only see one way of using it. So I keep practicing and I'll come back to you once I know more. But, you know, the thing about colouring now is that it's evolved, as I said before, so much, even in the last five years. What we used to do, cap highlights, then went to highlights and we were doing highlights and tints. And now everything we do in the salon really is a colour correction, in my opinion. 95% of what we do today is colour corrective work um, because people have so many more processes in their hair and people do so much more to their hair themselves at home. And that's cool. I'm down with that. You know, I've got no problems with people doing their own hair at home. Um, but obviously we always create barriers. The more things we do to our hair, the more barriers we create, the more difficult, the more challenging it can be to the hairdresser, the more expensive it can be to the client. So it is a little bit of a double-edged sword at times. Um, so once we've got this technique underway and we've got everything wrapped up, you know, we're going to obviously tone this technique. Now I'm using bleach to lift this. I could probably get away with a high lift tint on this particular client, but I wanted a very specific tone. And that is something that I will just sort of talk about a little bit just for a second. When we're using a high lift tint, to get uh, what I want out of this, which is uh, three levels of lift. I want to create a level nine at the root and I want to blend it into those kind of slightly lighter uh, level 10 slash nine ends. Um, the the reality of, of obviously creating a tone with a high lift tint, a high lift tint for those of you who don't know are tints that can lift up to five levels. Um, I could get this result done with a high lift tint quite easily. But I can't always control the end result with a high lift tint. Now, obviously, I'd go in with a violet shade to neutralize the warmth of yellow at a level nine. But I want to create a minky blonde with a beige violet hue because that's what I talked about to my client. 
And actually it's not dissimilar to a picture that she kind of had showed me in the past that we talked about. So I wanted that to be my end result. So it meant I needed a very clean level 10 canvas. And that is why I decided to use bleach. So in this particular instance, we are using um, Redkin flash lift with uh, 20 volume mixed on a one to 1.5 ratio. So for anybody that's not into ratios, that's uh, 45 grams of the 6% or 20 volume to 30 grams of the blue powder bleach. Um, I like that consistency. It's not everyone's cup of tea. I'm gonna make a video about using different consistencies and why, because that is a really important factor for me. Being able to control our product to make it to do different things when we need it to do different things at different times, that is an important thing for somebody who is a, a going to master their craft. So as you can see on this particular technique, back to the technique very quickly, I know that I'm you know, giving you the insights and information I think is really important. We've worked from the front hairline back to the highest point of the head um, as we work from the crown up towards the highest point of the head. Very simple, clip the hair out of the way. And this is the finished result that you can see in front of you now. A beautifully diffused set of highlights using the air touch technique and with those kind of separation in between each of the sections, it has created um, a true highlight. And remember guys, we are highlighting, not changing the color. We haven't changed the color because we haven't done every piece of hair. We have created pieces of hair throughout her own natural that are three shades lighter. Um, and that, that has created a beautiful natural diffusion. So we've done a level nine at the roots and we've taken that through into that level nine slash 10 on the ends. The tone we used was NB, which is natural beige. Um, and that was to give us that uh, violety minky hue. Beige above a six guys is made of violet and gold and an N is equal parts of red, yellow and blue. And so you do have a little bit more of that red and blue going on, pushing the NB into the violet minky tones. And it's a beautiful, beautiful shade. One of my absolute favorite colors in history, hands down. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found this insightful and gave you a little bit more context. As I said, the technique repeats itself over and over again. There was no need to keep talking about that technique after that very front section. You probably could do it with your eyes closed. I hope you give it a go. I hope you enjoy using it. And if you do, I would love to hear from you. Have a great week. See you soon.